So I'm going to pass something around. They say when you sell, and we're not really selling today, we're just talking, but to gauge as many senses as you can. So this will be a touch, see, smell kind of thing. It's a little shell. It's like a seashell that's going around. <laughs> Don't say what it is yet. Uh, we just had our industry trade show. It's called the International Supply and Sanitary Association. 4,000 booths in Las Vegas, Nevada. You want to talk about a big show? We ran for three days and didn't get to see everybody we wanted to see. Big industry. So who's familiar with Tom Peters? Anybody familiar with Tom Peters, the motivational speaker who wrote in search of excellence? 20 years ago, been around a long time. He was our keynote speaker. And he stood up and he said, I realized recently after some research that the cleaning industry has saved more lives over the last hundred years than all the doctors in the world combined. Because of our increase in knowledge, sanitation, disinfecting, those kinds of things. So it's, it's kind of an important industry. Um, so I, I want to talk about primarily saving you money because there's a lot of soft costs that you guys have that maybe you're not aware of some of the new stuff that's out there. That's clean, by the way, that just came out of the bag, so it's just a piece of plastic. <laughs> 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 it came out of the restroom okay. <laughs> So there actually are a lot of ways for you, you folks to save money with some of the very innovative products that are out. Let's start off with this. <laughs> How many of you have napkins in your session seat? Uh, SCA did a study and found how, how many, what's the average take for a customer and napkins? 20. That's kind of high, 10. So the average customer, they just stood there in restaurants and movie theaters and watched, and everybody grabs about an inch throws it on their tray or whatever. How many of them do you think they use? Check your garbage can at the end of the night. Most of it's waste. Uh, Express Snap by SCA has a patented uh, cover that allows you only to pull one napkin at a time. You can't get your fingers down there. You might pull 10, but you've got to stand there and do this 10 times. And we've watched and done tests, and about the average is about two to three. After about three, they figure, I've got three napkins. So right there is 70% savings in paper. So if you can save seven, they guarantee, SCA guarantees you 25% savings in paper just by using the Express Nap. My nice little design, I had my, my gal do a, you can put advertising, Enron Field in Dallas, I'm sorry, in Houston was in wrong. Now it's in Minimum. Can't remember what it is. Anyway, they pay for all their express snaps by the advertisement on the front in all their concession stands. So, if you have a business in town and you want to put these on the counter, they're probably willing to pay you to do it. So, you could also, you could also offset you know, your paper costs. Um, also, the roll, we do, we, we have about 2,000 products. You guys done with that? That's slow, don't you like Imagine going into your drive-in restaurant and smelling that. But, but really we're making a statement. We're not just keeping a place cleaner, saving money, but we're making a statement. And that is, you know, we care about our customers, but we also care about our employees. Have you ever had anyone call in sick Friday about 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock? I can't make it tonight. Probably never happens to y'all. Happens a lot in the movie theater industry. So by sanit keeping your place clean and sanitized, you actually can increase your productivity of employees and keep people from getting sick. Um, by little things. We go into school systems and we show people, you teach the kids to hand sanitize three times a day when they come to school after lunch and before, you know, sometime in the afternoon. You can reduce abs absenteeism by up to 50%. At Bryan ISD, they get $43 a day for each student that's in school. So if a student's sick, they lost 43 bucks. Well, they're screaming because they don't have any budget. We walked in and showed them at just a 20% reduction in absenteeism. We just increased your budget by $250,000 a year. <coughs> I didn't believe it. It happened about a year later. Swine flu hit. There was a worldwide run on hand sanitizer. They called us, Dan, we're sorry we want everything you have. I said, sorry, I'm out. So Gojo actually stopped their hand soap production and was doing hand sanitizer 24-7 while building another factory. So it's one of these things that nobody thinks much about it until all of a sudden it's an issue 
and then you're scrambling to do something with that. All we're saying is we have the aspirin. You know, get the aspirin cheap before you have a headache. So there's a lot of soft costs that are involved in saving you some money. Paper's one of them. You can also get roll towel dispensers. And you can set the timer. In other words, if they wave their hand, you can adjust the length of the towel. So instead of getting three feet, they get one. Maybe you set it for three seconds in between the next towel. So they'll wave, they'll get their towel, they'll be drying off trying to get the next one, didn't come out, and they walk away. So basically you double the amount of, or you cut, you know, you cut your towels in half. So what we're talking about is less inventory, less often, saving you some money. Here's a kind of an interesting product. I developed this, I've got the patent pending on it. Soda and also cleaner, guess what it does? So there was no industry standard on what you do with those nozzles and diffusers at night. I helped open up a theater in Amarillo and I was standing next to the health department. He, he, said, uh, he said he would never drink from a fountain machine. I do. But he said, you know, normally you won't notice the bacteria and whatnot in there. But if you've just got out of an operation or something, you're on some antibiotics, he said it will throw you for a loop. So he made them clean the brand new soda fountains before they were allowed to open them. Now, the kids had been drinking a few drinks, which was kind of surprising to me. But with this product, all you do is you take about a tablespoon, it's white powder, you drop it in a quart of warm water, take your diffusers and your nozzles out of your machine, drop them in there. The next morning, you will see the debris floating on the surface of the water. It, what we're trying to do with all of our products is eliminate labor. If 10% of your cost is chemicals to 80 or 90 is in labor, we can cut the labor in half and we save you some money. So there is no labor. So after about a week, all of your nozzles and diffusers will look brand new and all the germs will be dead as well. You just rinse them off and stick them back in the next morning. So that's, I have some samples of this, by the way, that will last you about a week. Go ahead and try it. Um, there's some other really cool products as well. This, this is kind of interesting. It's super absorbent powder. Someone throws up or spills a coat. This would primarily be for you guys at the concession stand. You sprinkle this on, it gels up instantly into a solid. You sweep it away and walk away. There's no getting down your hands and knees, that kind of thing. This is what's in Pampers, by the way. So it's, very, it's kind of cool. A guy, I show this to him once, he uses it at a magic show. We'll take a little cup of water. If someone has some liquid we can do it, just pour it in there real quick and it gels and you turn it upside down and it's solid. So that's kind of a fun thing. It leaves a real nice fragrance behind. Anybody have trouble with bees or flies at the drive in the trash? This is citronella. It's a natural product with flowers. Bees and flies and gnats hate it. You sprinkle it in your trash cans under the liner. Just leave it there. It's going to leave a nice citrus scent, but they're not going to have any bees and flies around. That'll eliminate that. You also can, uh, if you, like say on a Friday and you want your restrooms to smell nice or whatever, you now can fog real quick. I can hit problem areas. This is going to deodorize and disinfect an area. It kills MRSA and staph infection, those kinds of things. But if I lock this down, I can fog 6,000 cubic feet in about a minute. 30 seconds. It absorbs into everything, kills everything, and then leaves a really nice, fresh shell smell for probably 30 days. So that's kind of a cool product out there. Well, again, we're trying really to eliminate labor. We have a chemical mixing station where you can mix your own chemicals. You can make a quart of glass cleaner for about seven cents a quart. Use the bottles over and over and over and over and over. It makes multi-surface cleaner for about 26 cents a quart, degreaser for about 48 cents a quart, disinfectant for about 11 cents a quart, two five-gallon buckets, four, four uh, quart bottle fill-up, and then four options on mopping. By the way, I believe probably your biggest problem is your employees, honestly. Cross-contamination. They did a study in San Antonio found out there's feces in the auditoriums in most movie theaters. Why? They go mop the restroom. They walk over to the auditorium and they continue mopping. So you really should think about something like color coding, either your mop buckets. I have theaters that have blue mop buckets for the restrooms, yellow mop buckets for the concession stand. There's also a phenomenon sweeping. This is big in Europe. It's microfiber flat mopping system. And so basically it, it cuts your chemical usage by about 90%. And you can spray your chemical on this or whatever, Velcro it to the surface and off you go. You can actually pull it off you know, without touching and 
you can carry these around in a little pouch with a dirty and a clean with no water. So you just sort of wet them before and transfer them and keep right on going. Um, I thought about, and so you can get these in different colors. Microfiber is kind of like, here's a, here's a strand of cotton. They blow it up at the end, so now at the end there's five fingers. So microfiber cleans a lot better with less chemical, if sometimes like you glass, you can, I've got some microfiber rags over there where you can feel it, but you very, need very little chemical. So you can color code these. You can say, you know, blue mops only restrooms with the blue mop bucket. Do not, I don't want to see that. And you know instantly if somebody pulls the wrong bucket of mop into your concession stand, you don't want to cross contaminate. Uh, so you can do that as well. And I thought about the screens too. I made the biggest mistake of my life. My first uh, drive-in convention, I asked what everybody used to clean their screens and everybody yelled out rain simultaneously. So I, I don't do that anymore. But you can get hunger poles that go up to 40, 50 feet. You can get the wide mop. If you've got a spot up there, Johnny throws something up on the screen or whatever, there's a way to keep that screen clean and never leave the ground. Um, Maddie, uh, the ISSA claims that it takes $500 to get a pound of dirt out of the building. We're talking about the labor, chemicals, equipment, whatnot. And I just brought a little swatch book here, but just think about Maddie because. If you can get someone to take about 10, 12 steps, you've eliminated most of the soil and debris off their feet. So you might as well keep the dirt out. It's got to be a big deal for you guys. And it just saves you money from cleaning the inside as well. Sand is just like sandpaper on a wax floor. So it'll tear it up. But we do logo matting, indoor outdoor matting. <coughs> when it rains, these have uh, the, the, the water hog mats are always bi-level. So it drops the soil and it holds the rain. The, uh, the uh, trim around the outside will hold about a gallon of water per two square yards. So that water, instead of running off the mat and coming into your concession stand, stays on the mat. So think about that. We also do, also do anti-fatigue mat. It makes a big difference if you're staying on concrete for eight hours versus a soft mat. Uh, your employees are happier, they're more productive, that kind of thing. So be thinking about, you know, mat. Um, we also try to outthink those 16 year old movie, movie actors. You know, they're doing things one minute, they're mopping floors the next, and then they're popping popcorn, right? So, if you can, what we try to do is outthink the mistake. So, the traditional mops are cotton. You know, they float when you put them in the water the first time. There is some breaking, but they're organic. So, they will mold and build it. That's what causes mops to stink. We had a guy come in and mop our office recently and it smelled like vomit. When he was done, he wasn't, you know, his mop stuck. So you, you can still use cotton, but there's also man-made material. This is like a Santero. <coughs> you can see it touching a little bit. Super absorbent, just like a tissue, but it's because it's man-made, it will never grow bacteria. Thus, it will never stink. It's really kind of weird. You see it over in the corner, it's dirty, and you go, there's no smell. It's man-made material. We also have microfiber mops out as well. Man-made material, super absorbent, will never stink. So you kind of outthink the people that are kind of doing the cleaning sometimes and you try to eliminate the potential for error. And I want to show you kind of something that's kind of, you know, you hear about game changers in industry. And this next product really is a game changer in our industry. This is really fun just to walk around, you not know, do casinos and stuff, and everybody stops and wins them. Okay, so we're moving now in technology from chemistry to physics. So up until now, what we've done is we've added stuff to water to make it do what we want it to do. Acid, uh, alkaline, uh, whatever. And the bottom line to cleaning really is it's chemistry. Soils are either negatively or positively charged. So you put water that's positively or negatively charged, they attract. We had emulsifiers and surfactants that break it off the surface. Where the goal is to suspend whatever it is in water so that you can then wash it away. So now we're moving to physics. So what this does is it does two things. It ionizes the water by creating um, nanobubbles that are positively and negatively charged that sit on the surface of an object 
and it does the same thing. It att attaches to the soils. The, the bubbles sort of work their way around the soil, suspend it, and we wash it away. So it is a glass cleaner. It is a stainless steel cleaner. It is a carpet spotter. It is a multi-surface cleaner. Uh, so it's a good old general cleaner. It's a degreaser. When you spray your popcorn kettle plexiglass with this, the butter, the, the butter will just run. So it's a really good to clean everything except for you know, that carbon on the inside, which we have products for that too. This is doing something fairly interesting. The next thing it's doing is adding an electrical charge, a small electrical charge to the water as it comes out of the bottle. So the green light, it's charged by a battery pack that stays on board. About a three to four hour charge gives you 24 hours of solid use. It's an electronic trigger. Uh, but the, the blue light says we're adding an electrical charge, and I have a fluke meter, and I'll show you that a little bit later. But So there's electrical charge coming out. So what that does is when it hits microorganisms like E. coli, staph, AIDS, virus, things like that, the electrical charge takes that cell membrane and vibrates it and instantly pops it. So it is a sanitizer established by the EPA as well. It does kill microorganisms, 99.99% .99 of microorganisms on contact. The nice thing about this is it's tap water. All you do is fill it up at the sink. I filled it up next door. Now for you and me, <laughs> it's just water. They've been drinking ionized water in Japan for a long time, and we don't feel the electrical charge. So what happens is that when you spray a surface, it holds the electrical charge for about 30 seconds, and then it just turns back to normal water. So these are already hitting the streets. I saw some at our show. Eventually, you know those Purell, which we sell as well, that's Gojo, hand sanitizer. So there's an issue in school, <coughs> daycares, they don't want alcohol in there. It's hard to take on a plane. Eventually, you're gonna put your hand under an electronic dispenser that's gonna dispense water. And I've just sanitized my hands using tap water. This received the Restaurant Association's Innovative Product of the Year Award. It is established with the EPA. They're never they're not going after FDA approval, which will allow them to use it in the kitchen areas, the meat cutting areas of restaurants. Right now, every state kind of has to determine what they're doing with this. Uh, in Texas, we went to the local health department and then and I showed them the 25 page E. coli report and the 25 page staff report, you know, and so what they said was We'll allow you to sell this up and down the streets, any restaurant, but we really don't want to see it in the meat cutting areas yet. This is a different entity. The third entity they're going after for certification is hospital grade disinfectant. They're not changing the technology. They're just dealing with different forms of government that have their own way of you know, proving things. So for guys like me that sell chemicals, it kind of makes me nervous because you're going to be filling this up for up to 70 years with tap water. So it comes with a two-year warranty. It's polycarbonate plastic. That's what your headlights are made out of. Um, but, but so far, we're saying three to seven years is the <coughs> things are lasting. There's a two-year warranty on it. We just replace it. Um, kettle cleaner. I was talking to Doug. He took home our kettle cleaner. You just put a trigger sprayer in there. You can clean your kettles at lukewarm temperature, you know, room temperature. Spray it on. Let it set for a couple of minutes. Wipe it off gets up the burnt off, you know, burnt on carbon. We also now have kettle tablets that you throw in there, add some water, boil it if you want to do it that well, that way as well. Does anybody have any specific questions or problem areas? So any kind of water you can put in? Tap water. Don't put distilled water. It needs minerals. Actually the worse the water the better. It needs minerals for that for that water to hold that electrical charge. If you put distilled water in here and hit the trigger, the blue light probably won't come on. It's just, it needs some minerals and stuff floating around in the water to hold that charge. But if, you know, if you're uncomfortable with this, I've got mixing stations and tablets and whatever you want. It's, it's kind of some neat stuff that's out now. So thank you. Okay. Yep, thank you very much. Man.